difference. But, um, yeah, so my video started. But I was trying to say that, um, that Jesus said that, um, iniquity shall abound and the, the love of many will wax cold. So nowadays you, you see people that's full of indifference and apathy. Indifference and apathy and just don't care. Now, a narcissistic abuser, they don't, they wouldn't try to tell you that, oh, I hate you. Or they'll, they'll, they don't, they won't tell you that people hate you. But their, their response is, um, they'll say, people don't care about you. But then they'll make it like as if you want everything to be all about you or you want everybody to cater to you and stuff. But it's like, how are you supposed to survive if, you know, how, how are you supposed to survive if um, people want to say that you want everything handed to you? Or they'll say nothing is free. But they, at the same time, block you from working for a living. As a targeted individual... I can make, if I had a, a roof over my head, I can make cooking videos and get hardly any views. And, and they will make sure I'm ignored and get hardly any views on, on my cooking videos. Just like with my ebooks, everybody ignores and nobody's really that interested. But, I mean, people like to gravitate towards evil, like glorify glorifying evil um especially nowadays people love evil but um it's like difficult things it's like they'll make it like just because something is simple and a piece of cake to them it's a big hurdle and difficult for me. They make it like it's so easy to just go get a car. And I have setbacks and stuff that's, you know, hindering me. And and then, you, you know, if I were to try to get a job, they'll, they'll say, oh, just be patient and take everything one step at a time. Or I'm like, well, time is running out that I'm going to be back on the street soon. And as I said in the you know in previous videos that um these job opportunities say that um the job opportunities would say that um that they want i mean no experience necessary, but then. They say no experience necessary and we will train. And then when you, um, if they say no experience necessary, we will train. And then you get an interview and then you're the only one who doesn't get hired. And, um, and you can have the most polished up best resume or somebody else can do your resume for you. And um, you still don't end up not getting a job. But um, even in Pensacola, I've been having a hard time um, trying to get a job. And, you know, that Bonelli's Italian restaurant on North 9th Avenue, they didn't hire me. I didn't even get a call back. And that was the day before I got hired with the Sky Zone job. And y'all know what happened with that. And so, um, and there was a perp to pretend to fake monitor me and stalk and spy on me while I'm talking with the hiring manager at the Bonelli's place the Italian place and, and they were um very nice managers and stuff. And um 
and it's like and potential employers they get kind of intrusive and nosy when asking you certain questions during an interview and you know I'm not that good with lying so I find it easier to tell the truth so the fact that I don't have a car is making it hard for me to get job opportunities and they want they want people to have their have a car and I'm thinking about when um that foster boy James and the foster mom set me up um with a fight or uh, that didn't even have to happen well you know an altercation that didn't even have to happen and I could have still had my car I mean, no way in hell was I going to be 22 and 23 years old still being physically abused by foster family members. And that foster boy, James, not the foster cousin, James, but the other boy, James, he was um, younger than me and underage, still a child. And, and the foster mom had him to try to think he could discipline and handle me and put his hands on me. And I'm like, no way am I going to take this. So that's why I went and left to go to New York and end up, ended up homeless. And, um, wow, I'm, I mean, I'm glad I was never on the streets homeless in New York. But it was the most difficult way to live out there. And um, I don't even know how homeless people survive in New York because... N- I mean, I wasn't even panhandling asking for money in New York, but I was just trying to ask for directions in those snooty, snotty, narcissistic, rich, stuck-up bastards would blow me off and brick-wall me. In 2006, they would blow me off and brick-wall me just for trying to ask for directions, asking, well, excuse me, where do I take the L train? You know, or where do I... Or how do I get to 42nd Street? Or, you know, how, how do I get to, um, you know, how, can you show me how do I get to the subway by the junction? Or can you tell me where is um, Times Square? Or how can I get to El Barrio? You know, some asking for directions of where to go. And I got, they blew me off. And, I, and guess what? I didn't even really look homeless. And I was renting a room and it was abused there. And um, they would, you know, rob me out of all, all the little money I had. They were Dominican people, people, you know, from Dominican Republic that I rented a room from. And that, I felt bad because it was rats and rope, I mean rats. I had got my brand new um, college degree and my physical diploma, they, the rats were eat, biting, biting and eating on it. And I just felt so degraded, like these rats, the rats didn't care. And I remember the foster brother-in-law, Brian, the foster sister Shelly's husband, Brian, tried to say that, um, that's why you're going to be in New York with the, with the rats and the roaches and deserve it. You know, so. You no, know, he said, you're going to live in, you're going to be living in Harlem with the rats and roaches and deserve it. You know, because I wanted to go to New York or Los Angeles, either one. I thought Florida would have had a lot of opportunities. But um, I was trying to go to translation school. And when I, people say, oh, well, what are you, st- what, what are you going to school for? I said, well, I'm going, I, I, at the time I was studying Spanish. And I said I wanted to be, you know, a Spanish translator. Oh, you can't just go and be a translator. You gotta go to school for that. Well, I'm in school. Why are you saying that? You can't just go be a translator. You gotta go to school for that. Or this is not some get rich quick scheme. I never said it was. You asked me what am I studying? But that's how arguments start with narcissistic abusers and then they'll turn around and say you started it then you started the argument 
But the foster sister Shelly wanted to try to hold. She wanted to take the like she didn't want my biological family members to take the credit, but she wanted to take the credit for herself to try to be successful at trying to get me to um, not graduate from um, University of New Orleans in 2006 after Hurricane Katrina, and she was a big time. Come thinking back, she was a big time narcissistic perp. Very much a perp. And um and, and and then not seeing her for like fourteen or fifteen years and and see her again. Well no, I say about eleven years, because it was from two thousand six or two thousand seven last time I saw her and then I saw her in two thousand seventeen. Haven't seen or heard from her in years and she's still like look have this you know, I hate you kind of look. So, um, and treat me like as if my presence was not welcome. But that was before I even realized they were all, you know, part of, part of all this too. So, um, Shelly tried to distract me by trying to make it like, you don't want Wyatt to ruin your college career just so she can take the brownie points for ruining my college career. And upon just before graduating, you know, that's when she tried harder and harder to, to try to create crisis and scenarios on purpose to set me up to, to not get to graduate. And my GPA was supposed to have been higher. So I've had foster and biological family members who try to set me up to fail in college and, school, and going to school and stuff. And so even in the foster ho household, the foster home, excuse me, they try to set me up to fail in high school as well. Set up scenarios, on, wait till around exam or test time to set me up to fail. But then Shelly, right before I graduated from college, she was like, well, I'm going to translate it for y'all. <laughs> she said, uh, if I were you, I wouldn't hurry up and try to get into the workforce, honey. You you need to try to, uh, stop, you, you better stay in school as long as you can. Trying to say that um, if I were you, then I wouldn't be trying to, I wouldn't um, be trying to hurry up and get into the workforce. I would stay in school as long as I could. So, um, but it seemed like she was jealous of me graduating for me to be a supposed, supposed a retarded person graduating from college. And as I said, if it weren't for these setups and scenarios, then my grade point average was, you know, my performance was supposed to have been better. And my graduate, I mean, my grade point average was supposed to have been higher. And so that's another reason why, you know, it was hard for me to get a job, but I wonder, like, I was told that with my bachelor's degree, I wasn't told until after I was going to university in North Texas that they said that the only, um, the only, um, job opportunity you can have, even if I were to have over 3.0 GPA, was to be a Spanish teacher. But me graduating, my overall GPA was 2.3. But my GPA in Spanish was 2.7. But usually it would it was supposed to have been higher than that. So, um, dealing with Dr. Brooks, Elaine Brooks, was a narcissistic perp who wanted to try to set me up to fail and at University of New Orleans and um and a, and a few others. When, when I started in Spanish, like Spanish grammar, Spanish 1001, 1002, because they didn't have 101 at UNO, like 101, 102 or whatever, it was 1001, 1002. And even sophomore level Spanish, I was making straight A's. And I excelled at Spanish grammar. But then, when I mean, they had so many people 
who acting like as if they didn't want me to succeed. And even like on the University of New Orleans, those people weren't connected with the foster mom like when I, when I was at Nichols State University. But, you know, I've had professors and everybody, you know, even the, the students, thinking back, even the students were perps. So, um, and, and they have, you know, even the professors that act like as if they want to single out certain college students. And, you know, especially if you're disabled. And, um, single you out and, and try to set you up to fail. But um, I didn't even really have that much guidance or help. I was, you know, left to fend for myself. But I, I pretty much gave up on a Spanish career. I mean, I gave up on the desire to continue to push for a Spanish career. And I did not know how to break in to the freelance translating. I didn't, I mean, I just was, had no clue and didn't know where to turn or, or nothing like that. Nobody really wanted to help me. And then when I tried to take the test to get into the translation school in New York, they had an, a lady named Allison Dundee in New York, at NYU, New York University. And, um, I think I told this story before about twice she did that, that um, she, she emailed everybody to test except me. And when I told her I didn't get a test, she blamed me and then acted like a perp and laughed in my face and singled me out and then forced me to be punished with a more difficult exam on purpose to set me up to fail. And I've had numerous times um, just to... Um, end up disappointed and cry, you know, throughout the years and throughout my life and why people just do me dirty and treat me wrong. And so now finding out about gang stalking and, and narcissistic abuse and the level of evil and godlessness that people are, you know, people are so ungodly. So now I have a better understanding at, um, you know, I have a better understanding at why people are the way that they are and stuff. So, I mean, me finding out the truth and I guess being a little bit better equipped at how to, I mean, me figuring out how evil people are operating, you know, me being a little bit better equipped on, um, you know, how the enemy works. So it's, I'm still got some fear, but I've been, you know, trying to work on being less fearful of people and frightened of people because narcissistic abusers, they want to play God. They're, they're the devil, but they want to play God just like the devil wants to play God, and they try to make you scared of them. They want you scared of them. And, you know, they want to bully, frighten, and intimidate you, and they always feel the need to get angry and yell unnecessarily. So, um, I'm not going to go the whole 53 minutes. Well, this is chopped up into two. So right now, my phone says 46 minutes and 12 seconds. But it's um, going to be chopped up into two. It's like I only allowed 26 minutes and 46 seconds per video. And only allow up to two videos. <clears throat> and then my phone... You know, then there's no more space. Y'all saw there was a vehicle that just passed with bright, bright lights during the day. So, I mean, I'm not fluent in Spanish due to 
social isolation. And I thought Los Angeles was going to help me. But um, that was when I realized, the final, finally realized that, you know, I mean, I was even forced to be isolated. And almost everybody in Los Angeles speaks Spanish and Mexican or El Sa- from El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, whatever. A couple from Honduras. And they didn't want any, any dealings or association. They didn't want to talk to me. And people in Los Angeles, it was high population. And even my own black people didn't want to associate with me. Nobody wanted to associate with me. And so, you know, I can be, you know, walking down the street on the way to the laundromat and say hello to another black person like me. And when I say hi, they turn their nose up at me, like, deliberately turn the opposite way. And it's like, you know nothing about me. I don't know you, but I'm just saying hello. You, you know, I'm from New Orleans, basically, but they hate you if you're not from L.A. So, um, and it's like, how how can you see me off first sight before I open my mouth? You know, I'm not from L.A. So, um, and I remember that I, I was in my neighborhood when I was living there and it was a black guy who did that to me. And he, and, and, and I remember he was wearing red, but I didn't realize he was a perp come to think of it. So, um, well... I would like I, I I was supposed to yesterday, but I ended up not doing it. But I want to try to say I got a little over twenty six um, gigabytes of phone data used up. That's kind of fast, I know. But I've been uploading a lot of videos. But I've been trying to use the Wi Fi as much as possible. Use the Wi Fi as much as possible, unless of my phone phone data. Um, so, I'm going to try to use, you know, just the Wi-Fi. And to I didn't get to do it yesterday, but I'm not, I don't plan on leaving this place today or going anywhere. But I'm planning on, um, I would like to work on some writings today, whether it be fiction or nonfiction. I would like to work on some writing today. I'm a little bit refreshed and well well rested and stuff and I'm going to try to treat my teeth again. So I'll see y'all later on.